ng chairman kasi social media no so medyo maiksi yung attention span ng mga audience so we'll just keep it short and sweet we're live Good afternoon from Geneva, Switzerland. Um, as the world's largest humanitarian organization, while we are having these statutory meetings, of course, disaster response doesn't stop. And here with me today is the chairman and CEO of Philippine Red Cross, Richard Gordon, to walk us through the ongoing situation regarding the Typhoon Trami and the impact it left in the Philippines. Chairman Gordon, uh, we always deploy, and Philippine Red Cross is always there on the front line every time something major is happening. Can you explain to us what our staff and volunteers are seeing on the ground in terms of the overall situation? Well, the philosophy is to be always first, always ready and always there. So uh, it's a lot of waste from Manila. We have assets on the ground, but we have to bring, uh, because of the enormousness of the water that came down, the floods, we brought in an amphibian, which is, uh, we have two of those. And then uh, we have the uh, rescue trucks, as well as food trucks. Uh, and what you're seeing on the ground is uh, uh, a lot of suffering. Uh, you already have over 60 people dead uh, from landslides, drowning, and a lot of homes have been destroyed as well. Uh, and it's important to remember that uh, this is what you call the new climate effect, which means that uh, we call it in Filipino as nabulaga, bulaga, which means you know, surprise. Uh, it means uh, it's a sudden impact. And you don't expect it because it wasn't a typhoon. It was just an enormous amount of rain mm -hmm. and a combination of high tide and rain coming in. There was uh, two months of rain in one hour. Yeah. So people were totally, totally surprised and uh, uh, they were, you know, uh, quite unaware of what to do and so me too I, I, I went here uh, I wouldn't have come here if I thought that this typhoon was going to be that devastating but now we have to leave because it's important because just this morning we had another landslide and the problem is there will be another typhoon or I hope it's not a typhoon uh, tropical storm brewing in the Pacific coming in uh, called Leon mm -hmm. and then this last one uh, is going out, supposedly going to Vietnam, it might do a U-turn or what they call the Fujiwara effect, which means that you could have both storms coming down mm -hmm. and uh, hurting the Philippines again. That's very sad to hear. Chairman, um, this is the 11th typhoon that's impacted uh, Philippines this year, and we know that uh, on average we get about 20 to 25 typhoons each year. Um, what is the le major lesson that Philippine Red Cross is uh, applying every time, and what's so unique about your overall emergency response in place? You mentioned about the assets you have, including the amphibians that traveled all the way to the affected areas. We, we always find you. We always learn from the last typhoon, and each typhoon has a different character. Mm -hmm. Like this one, sudden. So you have to move fast. You have to borrow the low bed trailer because it's an enormous 30-ton, uh, uh, you know, boat uh, that travels on water and on, on land. Mm -hmm. And you have to bring your uh, relief goods right away. But unfortunately. The Red Cross has always learned to have a lot of volunteers, and we have volunteers on the ground. Uh, right now, we have about 800 volunteers just in the Bicol area, where the typhoon, is, or the so-called, not even a typhoon, where the storm is at. Uh, but also in Batangas, in the southern part, we have, in all the provinces, we always have what we call the 143 volunteers, which means that you have 44 in every barrio or every barangay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they provide initial information. The flood is rising, it's up to waist deep, it's over the roof already. So we know how to react as we are moving. So we brought uh, uh, rubber boats, uh, plastic boats, uh, and stuff like that. So we always make sure that when they are in the evacuation center, they would have had meals because we normally in the past, the Red Cross would give boxes of food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm but they would not have any place to cook it. Yeah. So now we created what we call the food trucks where ready hot meals are served and people just line up and they can have second servings as much as they want. And we just constantly cook uh, and uh, bring it to the evacuation centers 
and uh, so that people would have food. The other thing that we're doing is we're providing for uh, hygiene, mm -hmm. not just giving them hygiene kits like towels and toothbrushes and everything like that, or for mothers who are lactating, they would have a special place, uh, or for children in the evacuation center, uh, you know, they would have a happy place there where they would not be harassed or they would feel, uh, they would not be traumatized. Mm -hmm. But what is important is, I'm sure when the evacuation centers go to full uh, fruition, we're going to have uh, portable toilets, you know, the ones that they use in concerts. We would retain them so that people would at least find peace mm -hmm. when they do their sanitation uh, evacuation, and uh, at the same time they can have sh safe showers. Yes. And we use the we use the uh, innovation of using uh, the jerry cans, which has a, a spigot, and we put it on a ledge, and they have two, so they can have uh, hands-free showers and in a covered place, and uh, there will always be a guard outside, so at night they can do that and. Uh, not have any problems, but for the, for the moment, it is the onslaught of the typhoon that we're fighting. Uh, but at the same time, we're already on the relief mode, uh, and it's all on the ground already. All right, very comprehensive response there, Chairman. Um, in terms of the next steps and the longer-term plan, uh, what do you see the Philippine Red Cross will be doing in terms of the response to the latest typhoon, Trami? Well, like I said, uh, we have a menu of uh, you know interventions. Uh, and, you know, as this is happening, uh, there is flooding in Mindanao, mm -hmm. in the deep south, uh, in what they call Muslim land. And we're also addressing those problems. Uh, the typhoon or this, uh, the weather disturbance has also gone on to the south of the Philippines. Uh, this is the middle south. It's now down south of Manila in a province called Batangas. Uh, and it's headed to Cagayan, which is in the north. It has a wide embrace. It almost embraced the whole Philippines. But actually, eventually, the effect was on two-thirds of the islands. And so the unfortunate thing is that uh, we have uh, volunteers on the ground uh, ready to address it. And we have information just in time, on time, all the time. We have an operation center in Manila. And now, what have we done? We have also given what you call Starlink satellites. Mm -hmm in the headquarters as well as in our response vehicles so we can actually see the response that's ongoing the rescue that's ongoing what our people are facing uh, so that we could provide the necessary reinforcement of what they need on the ground so it has to be just in time on time all the time uh, and uh, this is the one thing that we have done in the last 20 years uh, where before we were such an impoverished society, we created a slogan called volunteers, and we have two million volunteers, and we have logistics, everything from trucks to rescue trucks uh, to uh, uh, we even have a ship, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, it's not uh, it's not boasting, but it's what we need. Yes, we don't want to be dependent on government. Uh, we will work with the government. In fact, government borrows our equipment. Uh, and what is important is that uh, you are also connected by information technology. So our, and we document everything so that our donors see what we do and we see how they see how we use the tents, we, they see how we use uh, what has been given. And that is important because we survive on the largesse and the generosity of our donors. Thank you, Chairman Gordon. That's a very uh, detailed uh, response in terms of how the Philippine Red Cross is tackling the ongoing emergency in the Philippines. And with Philippine Red Cross being always first, always ready, always there, yes. uh -huh. and applying very um, innovative solutions to modern-day challenges brought by the climate crisis. So, and obviously, Philippine Red Cross is also setting the example in terms of having in place a very efficient response system. Thank you again, Chairman Gordon. We Thank wish you, you safe much. travels. Yeah, and uh, we have to cut off our trip here because for the last two days, three days, we've been up late at night and we're in contact, uh, in contact by Zoom, hours on end uh, in our hotel room. Yeah. So, but now, because of the onset of another typhoon, I said it's time to come back. Thank you, Chairman. Safe Thank travels you. to Manila. Thank you. Thank you.